Let's talk about Git in this episode. So if you're looking for a job in the development sector right now, there is a high probability that your new employer will actually require you to know Git, at least the basics of it. So we are going to cover the basics of Git in this episode. And what is Git? Git is a version control system that helps you control, actually version control your code. So what that means is that uh, every time you make a commit, that uh, code is committed to your repository and you can revert back to it later. You can also branch your code. And uh, one of the main reasons to use Git is so that you can work with other developers. So there can be multiple developers on the same project and uh, using Git, it, it will be much, much easier for them uh, to work on the same project and even on the same files. So in this episode, we are going to cover the basics of Git. To use Git, of course, you have to have it installed on your system. If you're on a Mac, uh, you probably already got it installed. And if you don't have it installed, just install Xcode for uh, Mac OS and it's automatically going to install the git for you uh, if you want to install it for linux or for windows just go to this url right here and uh, then uh, you have installed git on mac os install git on windows and of course install git on linux so if you don't already have it installed please check this page and just install git on your system and then you can start using it Okay, let's just first create a new directory and call it git project. Then we see D into git project and let's just uh, initialize npm so that we have some files in our project. So npm init uh, and we are just going to go through all of these. That's okay, ls. Okay, so we have package.json installed. Let's now just install some node modules. So npm install, let's say node says browser sync. Browser sync and gulp. Okay, install those. Okay, now that this is done, now we have if we do ls, we have node modules, package log.json, package.json. Let's create another file and call it index.html. Okay, so we now have another file and that's it. One more file we are going to create is actually uh, connected to git. It's actually a git file called git ignore. So and it's actually that git ignore right so you want to create that, this file why is that because you don't always want all of your code to go into git repository especially when you're pushing it to a server or to github uh, and especially you don't want node modules why because when somebody downloads your project then they can just run npm install because you already have package.json installed and it's going to install node modules for them. So you would actually version control package.json and package log.json files, but you wouldn't want to um, install actually uh, version control node modules files because node modules can get pretty big. Also, the same thing is if you are working on PHP projects, you probably have a vendor directory uh, that installs the, uh, their files with the Composer. So you would wanna, uh, you don't wanna version control that. Uh, in some cases, you don't wanna version control images and so on. So version control what you need what you think you you will need to version control and what you don't want a version control you would use git ignore file for that so i'm just going to open up this in sublime in sublime and now uh, if we go right here we have this git ignore file so right away i'm going to put node modules in it so you just write node node modules, then you can add another file. Uh, for example, you can add something like assets uh, because 
for me, I always add this file because when I'm working on a project, I put all of my sketch files, Photoshop files, images, and so on in this assets folder. So I don't want to version control that. Uh, also, you can, if you're using uh, Sublime, you can do something like Sublime project. because Sublime creates Sublime project for you when you define a project, so you don't want to version control that. And also I think Sublime Workspace. So you don't want to control version control that either. Uh, if you're using uh, PHP Storm, then PHP Storm creates idea folder for you, so you don't want to version control that and so on. So everything you don't want a version control, you would put in this git ignore file. Save it. And now, how do we start up git? So to start git, uh, you would just do git init. And now we are initialized our empty git repository in git project.git. So if I do ls, you will see this .git directory right here. And if I do cd git, as you can see, this is git directory. And even my fish uh, command line says that this is actually a git directory. You have some configurations right here uh, that you can change and so on. But usually you don't touch this directory at all. Uh, unless you want uh, your project not to be version control anymore, then you would just delete that git directory. So we are going to leave this as it is. And now we have git initialized. So let's create something. Uh, let's go right here and just do HTML. So we have this git project project and go right here and do h1 hello world okay hello world and now we have something in our project so first command that you will learn in git is called git status so if i do that uh, as you can see, it says uh, we have some untracked files. So we have this git ignore file, uh, index.html file, package log JSON, and package JSON. As you can see, there are no node modules present right here because we are ignoring them with this git ignore file. Uh, so how do you add your files? So it's very simple. You just do git add. Okay, and now if we do git status, now you can see uh, we are on a ma master branch. As you can see, it says right here. So if you are using something like Z shell, fish shell, and so on, you get this out of the box. So this uh, Git helpers. And then it says, so you have added your files, but you still haven't committed them uh, to a commit. So we have these new files right here. So how do you commit your files? Well, very simple. You just do git commit dash m and then you write something about your commit so this is my first commit so i'm just going to call it first commit okay and that's it now our first commit is actually committed to our git repository and if you do git log you will see that this is this first commit is committed and this is our commit number. Uh, it says it's in master branch, it, it defines the author and so on. So let's change something right here. So hello universe, save this. And now if you do git status, it will say, okay, so you modified index.html file. So we of course want to add it. You can add it by doing git add index.html, but usually what you're going to do is you're always going to use this dot. So add everything that has been changed. You don't want to add one by one file. Uh, but if you only have one file and 
if you maybe just want to uh, add just one file you can do that but git add and then index.html okay so git status and now you see we have this modify index.html but it still isn't committed so changes to be committed okay so we can do git commit again and you just write some message so changed hello world to hello so these messages are actually for your fellow developers and also for you so that you can know what you did uh, in uh, in your commit so if I save this and do git log you can see that now we have two commits so we have uh, this is the last commit change hello world to hello universe and this is our first commit which is just called first commit so let's say that you want to create uh, a new feature for your website. In our case, it's going to be something really simple. We are going to create a header. So you want to do that, but you don't want to touch any of the existing code. So you don't want that to change. So you can create a branch. And when you branch out, you will have all of your code. You can do whatever you want with it, but this master branch will not be affected. So if you don't like what you did, you can just revert to the master branch and everything will be like nothing ever happened. So uh, to do that, let's just first check out what branches we currently have. So you do git branch, right? So you just have this master branch. Okay, let's create a new branch and call it new header. So git branch new header and now if i do git branch now you can see that i have master branch and the new header branch so what i can do right now is i can just do a git checkout and say i want to check out from this branch to the new header branch so you want to just switch branches so new header okay and uh, now as you can see my fish shell is telling me that i'm currently on a new header branch okay so i'm just going to go to my code editor and do header and uh, inside it i'm just going to have an a tag uh, with a class of logo and inside i'm just going to have some image And that's it save this okay now uh, if I do git status you can see that I modified index.html file so let's add it so git add uh, we add all of the changed files and then I do git commit create the header okay now we committed these changes uh, and now let's see what will happen if I uh, check out to the master branch. So I do git checkout master. Okay. If I go now to my code editor, as you can see, the code that we written is currently not here because we didn't make any changes to the master branch we just created changes to our new header branch but if i switch again so if i git checkout to new header and now go to my code editor as you can see the header is here so this is great for us so whenever you want to add a new feature to your site you can use branches so that you don't mess up any of the existing code that actually works okay so let's say this header is okay we want it it's great how do we merge it to our master branch so we will merge it like this so i just go git checkout master again and if we check this out in our code editor as you can see we don't have a header anymore so what you can do you can just do git merge actually let me just clear this out so git merge new header okay so we are going to merge the new header branch with the master branch 
and it's going to say updating fast forwarding index uh, HTML has added some lines and that's it. Uh, now if I check, uh, check this out, you can see that the header is actually here. If you want to delete new header branch, so let's say, okay, so new header is there. Uh, we don't need it anymore. You can just do git branch branch dash uh, capital D new header. And now the deleted branch new header was deleted. And uh, if we do git branch, we just get the master branch right here. So that's how you do. This is the basics of branches. Of course, uh, you can branch out uh, branches and so on. It can, it can get really, really complex. Uh, but this is the basics of how you do branches in Git. One more thing Git is uh, good for is pushing your code to the server <clears throat> so that you don't have to use FTP. Of course, since it's Git, it's always going to push the newest changes to the server. And uh, I will tell you right away that if you're using uh, something like a shared hosting and something like that, the probability that you will have Git there and that you can use it is pretty, pretty slim. Uh, I'm using uh, for actually for my site, I'm using uh, small orange hosting and then they actually provide you with options that uh, that you can install Git and use Git. So when I do some changes on my site, I first do it locally and then I push it to my server and this is what you get. Uh, but for most of the people on shared hosting, that will not be the case. So I don't want to show you that. Also, there are some things that you have to set up and so on. So if you're working in a company uh, that uses Git, uh, those things will probably be set up by your sysadmin and uh, and you won't even have to deal with it. So uh, in our company, we actually have a sysadmin that created all of that. And when we push our changes to our server, uh, the changes are pushed to the repository and then those changes are pushed to the preview server so that the clients can see what we actually did on the site. But as I said, that's too complex for our uh, case and for this video. Uh, so we are just going to use GitHub. If you don't already have a GitHub account, uh, you should definitely get one. Uh, it's free. So you can just go to your GitHub page and you will be greeted with something like this. As you can see, I'm already logged in. So let's say we want to start a project. Of course, everybody will be able to see your project. And now you give that project a name. So I'm just going to call it Git project. Git project is going to be public. If you want to have a private project, I think you have to pay GitHub something. So we are, of course, going to use a public project and then we'll, we'll, we will say create repository. Now, as you can see, you have some options. So you can uh, create a new repository on the command line. So this is all actually most of the things right here we already did. So we did get in it. Uh, we didn't add a readme file. So let's add a readme file right now, because since we are putting this on GitHub, we want our users uh, to have some information about the project that we are creating. And of course, if it's an open source project that are multiple people working on it and using your project, uh, you would probably have some tutorials there, uh, documentation and so on. So let's create uh, a readme file. Uh, you don't have to create it, it's optional, but uh, it's good practice to do so. So now we have a readme file and I'm just going to, uh, this is a markdown file. So I'm just going to create something like this, git project. Uh, and uh, okay. So we just added some message right here. So whenever ever someone visits the page of our project, it's going to be greeted with this text right here. Uh, 
Okay, so we created a readme file. Uh, let's see what next. So we have to commit it. And to commit it, uh, it says right here, first commit. So this is when you're just starting with, uh, with Git. Uh, but we are not going to do that. We are going to commit this. So git add, git commit. And we are going to call this pushing to GitHub because this is not our first commit. Okay, pushing to GitHub. And now one more important thing to do is adding this remote right here. So this is going to be your remote server. So you have to add it uh, and it's usually called origin. So you just copy this from GitHub this line and say git remote add origin and then the git will provide you with this address of course it's going to be different from you than it's for me and uh, now our origin uh, is added actually our remote server is added to our git configuration and now we just do this git push origin master origin master and that's it Okay, so now we pushed our code to the GitHub repository. Uh, one more thing to note here uh, is uh, that when you created your GitHub account, if you haven't set up your SSH keys, your SSH uh, public keys, uh, then it will probably ask you for your password. So be prepared for that. I have my public keys set up, so it doesn't ask me anything. It just pushes the changes, but it will probably ask you somewhere around here to enter your password. And uh, to add a password, you will just go to here, your profile, and you have this link. No. Nope, you know your profile, not uh, but uh, your settings, and you have this SSH and GPG keys, so you can add them there. Okay, uh, so now that we've done that, uh, let's refresh this page actually, uh, and see my repositories. And as you can see, I have this Git project repository right here. So if I click on it, these are all of our files. And uh, this is the readme MD file. So git project, this is our test git project, yay. So this is your readme MD. As I said, this is optional, but it's good uh, that you could create it. Also, you can check out all the files. So you can go to index.htm. You can see uh, what's in there. Uh, you can see what's in package.json file and so on. So this is how you deal with Git and this is how you push your changes. Of course, if we create uh, some other changes right here. So let's say to our readme file. Save this, do git add. Change readme and now you just do git push origin master. And now that this is pushed to the GitHub, you can just go right here, refresh this page and creating another change. Okay, so this is how you work uh, with GitHub. Just one more thing about GitHub. So if you ever wanna um, take project locally, so download the project locally, you can just go, I will, I will go to this Olympus repository that I have, uh, and you can do clone or download. So you can download the zip file, but since you are already using Git, why not do clone? So we will just do uh, inside Git project. You will probably do it somewhere else, but for our purposes, this is okay. So we, we would just do Git clone, clone, and now uh, I will clone this. So copy this, paste it in. So GitHub, tra -la -la, and now we just do this. So cloning into Olympus, and it's going to take all of the files from this GitHub repository. And if I do LS, you will see that now we have this Olympus directory here. And if I CD into it, 
you will see all of the files for that Olympus theme for WordPress or whatever. So this is how you would clone uh, projects from GitHub. If you want to work on them, if you need that code and so on. Of course, you can always download it by zip or you can open it in desktop. So this is another thing that I want to discuss uh, right here. We are not going to go into it, but I just want to make you aware that those things exist. So uh, as you can see, we all, all everything we actually did here was done <clears throat> in our command line but if you don't want to use command line you have some other uh, GUI tools so graphical tools that you can use so one of them is this uh, desktop.github.com so this is a, a desktop application for your git uh, repositories and you can download them for Mac uh, Windows and Linux and uh, it looks something like this I don't use it um, very much so I don't want to show you anything in it but as, as you can see in this image you even have a nice way to look at what changes have been made to what files uh, who to blame for those changes and so on also another popular tool which is pretty similar to this one is called source tree it's also free so you can download that and maybe use that if you want and if you're using something like VS Code, you get a Git out of the box with VS Code and you have similar things that you can do inside a code editor. So that's a recommendation. Also, if you use a PHP Storm, PHP Storm also has pretty powerful Git uh, functions that are integrated into the uh, actual editor. I think there are some things for uh, Sublime also, uh, but you have to check that out. So it's probably plugin based. Uh, and uh, those plugins and features will show you on what branch you are, uh, what changes you are creating and so on. So it will help you while you work with Git. Okay, so this has been it for this video. If you want to ask me questions, of course, you can do that via Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, uh, even GitHub. So just open up an issue on a project that you want to ask a question and you can ask it there. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you love this video, please just subscribe to my channel. And if you want to send some money my way, you can use the Patreon page for that. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next episode.